Joseph Hogue here with another video on the Let's Talk Money YouTube channel. I want to welcome all our subscribers and thank you for taking a part of your day to be here. If you're not part of that subscriber community yet, just click that little red button. It's free and you'll never miss an episode. Now it's going to surprise a lot of people, but Warren Buffett really doesn't think much about diversification and index funds. You know, against just about every investing expert, Buffett says you really only need diversification when you don't know what you're doing. The problem is, how do you invest like the Oracle of Omaha? Uh, can you set up a portfolio of stocks to track his success, kind of like a, a Warren Buffett index fund? To do exactly that, I reached out to an investing guru, Julie Raines, founder of investingtothrive.com. Now, we've worked together on a chapter-by-chapter -chapter review of The Intelligent Investor, you know, one of the best Buffett books you can read. And I couldn't wait to get her on as part of our expert investing series. So Julie is a graduate of the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill with a degree in business and a master's level certificate in communications. She's the co-author of 10,001 Ways to Live Large on a Small Budget and has spent years advising investors on how to pick stocks. So Julie, thanks for being with us today to talk about how we can pick stocks like Warren Buffett. Thanks for having me, Joseph. So let's get right into it because, you know, I'm excited about this topic. I've followed Warren Buffett for, uh, for quite a few years and, and read that book uh, that, that we talked about. How would you define Warren Buffett's investing strategy? I'd say it very simply, great companies at a good price. Definitely. Yeah. And, and that's, that's, it seems overly simplistic, but that is his, his entire investing theory is, is he buys companies rather than stocks. And, and it's obviously worked out very well for him. So what are some of the ways or fundamentals that, that you like to look for uh, when picking stocks like Warren Buffett? Uh, well, one of the things I look for is a, a nice profit margin. And this sounds really basic, but you want to have a company, obviously you can see where a company is generating sales, but you want to make sure that company is generating profits on those sales also. So, and the bigger the profit margin to me, the better. Um, I also look to, like to look for one that's, you know, it's, it's been a steady profit margin so that I can tell the company knows what they're doing. They know how to price their product, their, their products, their services, and they know um, they're able to sustain that profit margin over time. So, that's a big, and you can look at that, and that kind of gives you an indication of one of the things that, that Warren Buffett coined the, the term economic moat. Um, I think there's a lot more to that, but that's one thing I look at. If they've got a nice, so solid profit margin, they know like they're able to protect themselves against um, competitors, and they know how to make money. Sure, and and you know, there's so much in that in that margin that you can look at to really find best of breed stocks. You know, not just the par profit margin, which is really the uh, that earnings per share. Uh, divide or the earnings divided by sales, but I like to also look at the operating margin, which is just their operating uh, earnings divided by total sales. And what that does is, instead of whereas the profit margin, you're looking at uh, their complete their earnings, that bottom line earnings number after interest expenses and after taxes. That operating earnings, that operating margin, just gives you a great picture of how competitive and how uh, efficient they are running that business without the leverage and without the taxes. Uh, so, so you've got the, the operating margin and, and as well as just that gross margin, which is just sales minus their, uh, their cost of goods sold uh, and, and gives you at that, uh, you know, that really how, how efficient are they at buying the raw materials for to turn those into sales. Uh, so, so definitely those, those margins, that profitability, uh, that you can use to compare against their competitors, it really gives you an idea of, of how well they're doing in the, uh, in the space. So what are your, uh, do you have any favorite Buffett stocks, uh, any stocks that you hold that, uh, that Warren Buffett also holds, and, and why do you like those so much? Yes, um, there's a few that he holds in um, the Berkshire Hathaway, and that's also hold Berkshire Hathaway as a whole, mm -hmm. as, a, as, a, as a coding. Um, but the ones that, a couple of the ones that I like, a few that I like are MasterCard, um, Costco, and Johnson & Johnson. Okay. And yeah. Yeah, yeah he's, he's definitely, uh, historically, I think Warren Buffett has stayed with uh, a lot of the, the consumer staples names. He likes those cash flow businesses, those, those businesses and the industries that 
are maybe a little bit more mature and a little bit more stable. So they have those, that cash that, that flows off and he can use to, uh, to reinvest or, or invest in other stuff. But I think lately it's been really interesting that he's kind of uh, evolved into other industries. I, I know he's gone into payment processing a lot. He owns quite a few of the different card companies, MasterCard, Visa, uh, American Express. Uh, and he's also gotten more, uh, you know, more, more savvy in uh, technology and some other stocks. I think uh, the largest holding of Berkshire Hathaway, the largest equity holding anyway, is now Apple, uh, which is interesting, uh, you know, given the rest of his, of his portfolio. Right. He stayed away from technology in the past, but I think something that's interesting about some of these companies is that they're able to, they do have a long history and they look like they're going to be the kind of companies that are sustainable in the future but picking out MasterCard, for example, which I think of just as a credit card, mm -hmm. has a lot of payment processing and does a lot of global processing. They have a real technology arm. Yeah, well. yeah. What I, what I like to do a lot of times, and, and you know, everybody loves to watch the uh, the the forms that come out of uh, Berkshire Hathaway that release their their changes to their to their stock picks every every quarter. And what's really interesting is is if you look at trends in there and and look at the broader industry picture of maybe what Buffett is looking at as far as, you know, where the stock market might be going or where industries might be going. He's gotten obviously into those, into those payment processors, which maybe he thinks digital payments and, and that kind of thing is going to be a larger part of the economy in the future. Uh, he's also gotten uh, pretty, pretty deep into banks. Uh, and, uh, you know, he's got some larger banks like Wells Fargo, but he's also been investing uh, pretty heavily in these smaller community banks. So it's really interesting to see that watch the uh, the interest rates rise so so obviously you know banks are maybe getting more profitable with those uh with that interest rate spread uh and then some of the regulations that have been changing in washington uh that might favor those banks and, and so you kind of get a picture of what he's thinking uh when he's investing in some of these larger broader industries right and i think one thing that can kind of fool you though when you look at your look at his portfolio if you went out and bought those today they might not be available at a good price so he's probably snapped a lot of those companies up at a great at a at a really excellent price it might not be available for us right now sure yeah what a lot of people don't understand is when these forms come out then uh that is you know lagged information so that's that's all the uh you know the stocks that they bought or or changed their portfolio in in the last quarter so they're at least a month or two uh, uh, in the past. And of course, a lot of times he'll go on, on public, uh, public record as saying that, you know, maybe he's been in these stocks or, or he's bought, a, uh, bought some exposure in these stocks. So, of course, those stocks are going to go up uh, higher even before the forms are released. So now maybe a little something a little bit more controversial. What, what are some stocks that you think Buffett might be wrong about? You know, some stocks that you've... Uh, seen he's invested in it and kind of make you uh, make you wonder a little bit. Well, you mentioned some of the, the, the banking industry and the one that I have probably from a personal standpoint that I'm not crazy about is the, the Wells Fargo investment. Um, I'm not a, uh, personally I invest more and, and use more community banks okay. as myself. And then when you think about some of the fraud that's involved with, with Wells, Wells Fargo, not just once, but repeatedly, so that's one that I'm not crazy about and, and, and would stay away from. Um, but I'm not, <laughs> I'm not a billionaire like um, Warren Buffett, so I'm, he might know some things I don't know. But, but again, he, bought the, he likely bought that at um, much more competitive prices than, than when I could buy it right now. Sure, sure. And that's, you know, that's another thing that people don't realize a lot about, uh, about Buffett's stock picks and his, his business investing is, is just by virtue of him being able to put billions of dollars into that company. Uh, you know, he can get preferred shares at better rates. He can get uh, better deals than just simply, you know, buying the stocks on the, on the open market. So uh, not always a, uh, the, the best move just to follow him into stuff. I actually don't think that the Wells Fargo uh, investment was too bad. I mean, they've obviously got uh, have some problems with, with the culture there and with the, the scams and the recent headlines that they've hit. But, you know, historically they've had uh, excellent customer service, and it's it's the the nation's largest mortgage uh, lender. Uh, so that kind of competitive advantage, I think, can can help them rebound. Uh, one thing that I've kind of wondered, though, in, in recent years, is is his growing exposure to Apple. You know, it's it's the largest uh, investment in the equity portfolio, and it's not exactly cheap. You know, it is it's hard to argue that uh, Apple fits with his 
historical value bent uh, as far as investing. Uh, now, that's not to say that they don't really dominate the, uh, the consumer tech space and, and I'm sure have, have many years ahead of them, but uh, I, I kind of wonder about his timing in, in Apple shares. I see your point about that not necessarily being a value buy for him. Yeah. So some great ideas, great information. I want to thank our guest, Julie Raines, for her insight into picking stocks and maybe creating your own index fund to track Warren Buffett. Be sure to check out her blog at investingtothrive.com. I'll leave a link to that in the video description below. If you want to keep getting great ideas and interviews on beating debt, making more money, and just making your money work for you for a change, don't forget to click that subscribe button and join the community. If you've got a question for Julie or for myself, ask it in the comments below and we'll make sure you get an answer.